Hello, and welcome back to yet another video. This is the 27th episode of a story in which 10-year-old Naruto meets Minato from future and that turns Naruto's life upside down. As Naruto lives a happy life in which he is trained by Minato and later Kushina too. After you've finished watching, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. To begin, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Let's get the party started. Minato and Anoki were fighting in Kanoha skies to a stalemate until the Tsuchikage tricked the hero with a gigantic boulder and took the opportunity to send a dust element ball powerful enough to destroy Kanoha and fast enough to not leave Minato the chance to intercept it. Meanwhile Itachi and Sasuke pushed aside their differences to fight Pain's paths, managing to destroy the Azura, the Animal and the Naraka paths. Then fight continues with Sasuke summoning Nikomada and Itachi using the Tsukuyami in the Deva path. Anoki watched how his dust ball approached Kanoha while Minato desperately flied towards it in a futile attempt to intercept it, but no matter how fast was Minato flying, the ball was faster and the distance between him and the ball was bigger and bigger with each instant. I should brace myself for the imminent impact, Kanoha will be destroyed in an instant, there is no way he will reach the ball and use his space-time techniques to teleport it elsewhere, he thought. Suddenly Minato disappeared in a yellow flash and reappeared just before the ball. Then he handled one of his special kanais and made the ball disappear. What? He teleported himself without his kanais? How is that possible? Before he could do anything else, Minato teleported at his side and delivered a vicious kick to his hip, shattering it. The pain was unbearable but Anoki bit his tongue, he wouldn't give his opponent the pleasure to hear his cries. But the fight was over, Anoki had already used most of his remaining chakra in his last attack and with his old wound weakening him again he was no longer in condition to fight, he only could hope for a quick death. I know when I defeated, as a Kage I won't ask for any mercy, kill me as you want. I just want to know how you did it, said Anoki while he held his hip. Without a word Minato placed a tag with a seal on Anoki's hip and to the Tsuchikage surprise the pain receded. An analgesic tag, the secret of their creation was lost with Yuzu but I shouldn't be surprised that he knows it. These tree huggers, playing Virtus until the end, he probably wants to give me a painless death, thought Anoki while he prepared himself to receive a killing blow. But it never came, instead of that Minato decided to respond his question. It is not a very known fact but I can perform the heration without my tags, they just work as markers that I use to teleport safely so I wouldn't teleport in the same space occupied by a rock or my adversary. As long as I have a good view of my destiny I can teleport without the tags. And no, I'm not planning to kill you, said Minato. Realization hit the old Kage. So that's how he did it. He fills the battlefield with tags not because he needs them to teleport but to make several teleports in a quick succession. For years I believed that the tags were a crutch that limited the power of the heration, that he couldn't use it without them, but they are. Actually a tool to make it more efficient, thought Anoki. Why did you spare my life? Do you plan to use me as a prisoner of war? I'd rather kill myself than to allow it to happen, he stated. Minato denied it with his head. No, I just want you to listen. IWA was tricked by our common enemy from Akatsuki to attack Kanoha, I won't play their game and destroy our future allies, he said. Anoki almost wanted to laugh, almost. You are a very bad prankster, Yandame, why IWA should ally after you killed so many of our troops today, asked Anoki. But they are alive, just incapacitated, said Minato. What? cried Anoki. Minato put a hand on the old Kage's shoulder and teleported them to one of the seals at Kanoha, there, he pointed at one of the fallen IWA ninjas. Take a look by yourself, he said. The old Kage examined one of his comrades and realized that he was alive, that the wound he received from Minato incapacitated the ninja without killing him. Anoki then realized that he almost killed his comrades when he threw that ball towards Kanoha, that Minato saved them when he intercepted the attack. Good afternoon Tsuchikage-sama. How are you? Are you going to stop fighting and talk, 
asked a slimy creature attached to the ninja Anoki recognized it as one of Katsuyu's mini-clones. What the? What are you doing to my ninja? he asked. I'm healing his wounds while keeping him sedated so he won't try to attack until the battle is over. Oh my, your hip is damaged, do you want me to heal it? asked the very well-mannered slug. For an instant Anoki was tempted to accept the offer but he was too stubborn to receive help from Kanoha, it was bad enough to be using that painkiller seal from the yellow flash. He looked at Minato with a very serious face. So what you were saying is true? Is really Akatsuki such a terrible menace that made Kanoha so desperate for allies to the point that you are sparing the lives of those who just minutes ago were attacking your village? Who is behind it? asked Anoki. Uchiha Madara, responded Minato. Stop joking and... Wait, are you really serious about that? Is he really alive after so many decades? asked Anoki. Minato nodded. If we think about it, it is not as strange, he faked his death in the Valley of the End. After that battle he used stolen cells from the Shodai Hokage to keep himself alive. He spent the following decades influencing the ninja world for worse while plotting a plan to gain world dominance. He was the one who started the animosity between the Naide Mizukage and your sensei and predecessor Mu and the one who settled things so they would kill each other. Later he became the Sande Mizukage under a fake identity and turned Kirigakure into the bloody mist village, that's just the beginning of what he did, explained Minato. Anoki remembered his past encounters with Madara during their youth and felt a chill on his spine at the memory of he darkness he saw in that Uchiha. Now he had no doubt that the Yandame Hokage was saying the truth, if he was responsible of half the things his former adversary mentioned then the idea of an alliance between IWA and Kanoha was more than reasonable. It explains why Suna and Kiri are now so buddy-buddy with Kanoha. What is Madara's plan? asked Anoki. Minato had to repress a smile, glad that an old mule like Anoki was finally listening. Madara wants to gather all the tailed beasts in order to revive the Jubi, seal it within himself and use the moon to enslave all living beings in an eternal genjutsu. For that purpose he got control of Akatsuki and using its members to get the beasts. He already has the Sanbai and the Rokubi and already tried to get the Ichibi and the Kyubi. He. What's going on, why did you stop speaking, asked Anoki. Damn it's the Yanbi. I was so concentrated in you that I didn't realize his presence. It is not releasing any hostility, does it mean that Rashi managed to become a perfect Jinchuriki like B? Yes, he did, I see him on Son Goku's head, commented Minato. Son Goku? Who's that? asked Anoki hiding his surprise for Rashi's accomplishment. That's the name of the Yanbi, all the Bijou have one, responded Minato. You look really calm for having an unleashed bijou at your village. I suppose that you must have a countermeasure for that, commented the Tsuchikage. Minato nodded. Yes, we have one, look here he comes, he said. Suddenly, before the Yanbi appeared a colossal, serpent-like dragon, with a ridiculous nose. It was made of wood. That's Hashirama's wood dragon. Don't tell me that he is alive too, cried Anoki. No he isn't, that dragon was created by Yamato, the wood user of the Hand of Death, I taught it to him after seeing Hashirama performing it several times in the afterlife. It is not as powerful as Hashirama's, it wouldn't have a chance against the most powerful tailed beasts but should be enough to contain the Yanbi, explained Minato. After everything he saw Anoki had little doubts about Minato meeting Hashirama in the afterlife. He took a decision. Whatever. I realize that Rashi is protecting my ninja. As the second in command of Iwa's forces I can declare a ceasefire, help me to convince them to stop fighting and I will put an end on this invasion, although I can't say anything about Odo's forces, said Anoki. You don't have to worry about the sound ninja. I didn't hold back with them, they are dead Jiraiya is now dealing with Orochimaru, he will win, said Minato. Anoki looked at Minato with respect. He only left my ninjas alive because he will need our help later, 
if it was not for our common enemy he would have destroyed us. No wonder why he became a Kage, he thought. Now that I think about it, wouldn't you get in trouble with the current Tsuchikage for declaring a ceasefire? asked. Minato. That muta moron? He only became that Tsuchikage because I was tired of paperwork, before leaving the office I wrote a law that allows me to challenge him for the hat back whenever I want, commented Anoki. Minato looked at Anoki with respect. A backup plan to get back the power in case his successor was not a good Kage, very cunning. No wonder why he became the Kage with the longest reign, he thought. Without any word, both Kages headed towards Rashi and Yamato before they turned Kanoha into the scenario of a kaiju movie. Elsewhere Sasuke was avoiding the attacks from the Preta and the human paths while ridding Nikomata. The young Uchiha was grateful that the cat decided to help him, he was beginning to feel the toll of the continuous fight and his eyes really hurt. Those new techniques he could use now were really powerful but made his eyes hurt a lot and a part of him realized that it was not a good idea to abuse them. I can't allow any of those freaks to touch me, the big one will absorb my chakra and I don't know what would do the long-haired one but I'm sure that it will be more dangerous than being able to use all five elements, he thought while he swallowed a soldier pill. The taste was horrible, he had to use all his will to not puke, but the effects were immediate and he felt how his chakra was replenished. When this is over I will ask Tsunade to make a check in Sakura to find out if she has a taste disorder and. The image of Sakura's face when pain made him impale her with his chidori appeared in his mind. All the fatigue disappeared, replaced by pure fury. He forced Nakomata to charge towards the pain paths, at first the cat was tempted to dismount the young Uchiha and mark his face for his rudeness but Sasuke's enraged face suggested him that it was not the best moment to teach the brat some manners. For the next minute Sasuke alongside his summon fought like he never did before, the Uchiha used all tricks and techniques he developed while training with Kakashi and the Sandame catching off guard his opponents several times. Unfortunately said opponents were paths of pain, their shared mind and vision made their team work almost perfect, driving the fight to a stalemate. If things continue like this I will be out of chakra again. Nikomata is getting tired too, he won't last very longer. However the pain paths don't look winded at all. Damn chakra monsters, I wonder if Naruto realizes how lucky he is, thought Sasuke. Just at that moment Itachi used his Tsukuyami against the Deva path. With Itachi Nagato found himself tied to a cross in a dark dimension with a red moon and before him there were multiple clones of Itachi holding swords. So that's your true appearance, it is not what imagined, commented Itachi. It doesn't matter, before the day ends you will die, responded Nagato. We are in the Tsukuyami world, for the next 72 hours I will control. Everything that will happen here, said one of the Itachis. Said Itachi stabbed him with his sword, he was followed by the rest of Itachis who did the same. When all the Itachis had their swords stained with Nagato's blood the first one spoke again. 71 hours and 59 minutes left. Outside world as soon as Itachi used his genjutsu the human and the preta paths stopped moving. Nikomata realized what was happening with them. Sasuke, they are. Trapped in a genjutsu, finished Sasuke, recognizing the symptoms after having a specialist as Jonin Sensei. They took advantage of it and charged towards the nearest one, the human path, with a quick combination of sword and claws they cut their opponent in half. They were going to do the same with the Preta path but suddenly it began to move again, forcing them to retreat. The Genjutsu didn't last very long, thought Sasuke. With Itachi the elder Uchiha looked how the Deva path collapsed to the ground. What a terrific opponent, he didn't cry ever once during the Tsukuyami, thought Itachi while he charged towards the Deva path to finish him while he was still suffering the effects of the prolonged torture. But to his surprise the Deva path got up like nothing happened. Really you thought that some torture would work on me? Living with pain is my life, I'm pain. Shinra Tensei, exclaimed the path. Itachi braced himself to receive the attack but just before the repelling force hit him he disappeared in a puff of smoke. 
Akage Bunshin? No, it's like he was summoned. Never mind I'll destroy Sasuke before he reappears, thought Pain. Said Uchiha and Nikomata were about to try a new tactic to defeat the Preta path when they were suddenly attacked by the repelling force of the Deva path, only saved in the last moment by the feline reflexes of the summon who used a technique that super-accelerated him and moved them several meters away from an attack that destroyed the building where they were fighting. Unfortunately that technique took a good toll in Nikomata's remaining chakra. Sasuke, I'm near my limit, if I use a bit more of chakra the summoning will end, we should escape, said the cat. But where? I can't lead them to other Kanoha ninja because he would endanger them, I will have to use those new techniques, commented Sasuke. A smoke explosion happened at their side, ninja and ninja cat got on guard. Fortunately it was Itachi, who appeared back from wherever he was summoned. For some reason he took a look to his clothes and left a sigh of relief when he saw that everything was in order. I see that there are only two paths left. I have a plan, commented the elder Uchiha. Meanwhile the Deva path was a rose over the village, looking for Sasuke. He saw him and the huge cat hidden behind a chimney. Both paths charged towards the chimney. Shinra Tensei, exclaimed the Deva path, destroying the structure only to find that they were no longer there. Then the Deva path heard the sound of a chirping sound and saw Sasuke and the cat jumping towards him while Itachi was running towards the Preta performing the hand signs of a genjutsu. With a quick movement the Deva path evaded Sasuke and Nikomata's jumping attack while the Preta closed his eyes, knowing that Itachi's genjutsu wouldn't work if the path didn't look at him directly and that he could use the Deva's eyes to guide the Preta path and prevent any taijutsu Itachi could try with him. However to Pain's surprise he saw how Itachi's arm suddenly got longer and used it to stab the Preta path's heart destroying him. Sasuke was engulfed in a poof of smoke revealing that he was actually Itachi under a henge while the Itachi who impaled the Preta path revealed himself as the real Sasuke, the extra long arm being actually the Kiba sword. That path absorbed the energy of the Chidori but his power didn't work against my sword's blade, commented Sasuke. The chirping sound didn't came from me while henged as Sasuke but from the real Sasuke, he performed the jutsu to make my fake attack more realistic, our only target was the Preta path, said Itachi. I'm sorry but I have to go back, I'm at my limit, said Nikomata. Thank you for your help, when this is over I will summon you again so we can have that duel, said Sasuke. That won't be necessary, now that I fought alongside you I know that you are a worthy summoner, said the cat. And to be frank, I'm not in the mood to get more scars for fighting an Uchiha, thought Nikomata while he disappeared. Pain was furious, these Kanoha ninjas with their inferior Sharingan eyes managed to destroy five of the six paths of Pain, the soul holder of the Rinnegan, a god among men. H how you dare to defy a god? I won't hold back anymore. I don't care if could end killing the Jinchurikis at the village I can wait more years for my plan but my revenge against Kanoha will begin now. Now that I don't have to worry about the other paths I can focus all my power in the Deva path, exclaimed Pain while he arised more and more over the village until he got into an altitude where he could see all the village, and the village could see him. Shikamaru spotted Pain and realized what he was going to do. Shit. He is going to destroy the village. Everyone take cover, he cried. From her safe point Tsunade saw Pain preparing to repeat history. Not again, she cried while she braced herself for the impact, realizing that there was nowhere to run. Itachi recognized the danger active his Susanu and used it to shield Sasuke, focusing all his chakra to make giant's armor as thick and resistant as possible. Suddenly he coughed a bit of blood and noticed how his vision was fading. Not now. I have to, protect Ototo. Itachi? What are you doing? The attack was ready. Disappear Kanoha. Shinra Tensei. Heavenly. Subjugation of the omnipresent god, exclaimed Pain. But the instant before the attack was unleashed he felt somebody grabbing him. It was Naruto. Over my dead corpse you will destroy Kanoha. I can't be the Hokage of a huge hole. 
Hiration, exclaimed the blonde while they disappeared. All those ninjas who were not aware of Payne's attack and were not cowering saw the scene, just after they saw how a mountain several kilometers away from Kanoha was leveled and fell to the ground due to the aftereffects of the blast. The Kanoha 15 couldn't believe what they saw. The mountain is completely destroyed, luckily nobody lived there, said Chuji, T that could have been Kanoha, commented Haku. The village would have been destroyed, nobody would have survived, pointed remarked Ten Ten. Yeah, we are lucky that Naruto teleported that guy away at the last second, said Kiba. Everyone paled. Oh my. What happened to Naruto? Is he all right? asked Niji. Elsewhere, a certain Hyuga girl was watching at the destroyed mountain with a mixture of shock and disbelief. Tears began to form on her eyes but she whipped then and began to run towards the new wasteland. Naruto, please be safe. Minato managed to defeat Inoki, reveals that he didn't kill the IWA and convinces him to listen about Madara's threat. Meanwhile Itachi and Sasuke managed to defeat Pain's bodies leaving only the Deva path. Unfortunately Pain decided to use the full power of said path to destroy Kanoha but in the last second Naruto appears and teleports them away to a mountain near Kanoha that is destroyed. Nobody knows what happened to Naruto. With Jiraiya the battle between the Sanans was getting more and more violent, it was the kind of battle that would have ended a long time ago if both combatants didn't happen to posse's such exceptional recovery capabilities. Orochimaru never would admit it but he was scared, only two times he felt so much fear. The first one was when he along his fellow Sanans lost against Hanzo of the Salamander. The second was when he his old team ambushed him at the forest of death and was poisoned and forced to flee. Now he was having that feeling again. The reason was the terrific combination of Jiraiya in sage mode and the two old toads who fused with him. Much to his chagrin he found out that despite their size those Batrachians could be considered as powerful as boss summons like Gamabunta or Manda, size didn't matter to them. It's something he found out earlier after summoning a snake as big as a three stories house just to see how it was knocked and the old hag jumped from Jiraiya's shoulder and knocked it with a mere punch. Things got worse when the male toad managed hit him with a technique named Zessenzen, fighting tongue slash, that turned him ultra long and extremely sharp, managing to cut him in half. If Orochimaru didn't use his Orochimaru Ryu no Kawarimi no Jutsu, Orochimaru. Style body replacement technique, a technique that regenerated him resembling how a snake shed its skin, he would have died. After using that technique he tried to intimidate Jiraiya claiming that he was immortal but the Godame laughed at him pointing that he felt how his chakra levels dropped after using that technique and that if he used it again he wouldn't have enough the chakra to fight the sages and him, who not only had a shared chakra pool due to their fusion but also spent less of their own chakra due to the nature chakra they were gathering all time. Orochimaru realized that even with the bloodline limit granted by Kimimaro's body he had little chance of winning against Jiraiya, the sage even that advantage but the toads put the odds in Jiraiya's favor. Things would have been different if he had the chance to summon the past Hokages but due to Akatsuki's interference he lost his triumph card. Orochimaru took the decision that it was time to flee, he would destroy Kanoha another day. Ku, ku, ku. It was funny to play with you Jiraiya Kuen but I have better things to do than to play with you, he said while he sinked into the ground and disappeared. Quickly Ma, find him, exclaimed Fukasaku. Without a word, Shima activated her Zesenbaku, fighting tongue bind, a strange technique that created a face at her tongue that began to look at all directions. He is there, she exclaimed while she pointed at the base of a nearby tree. Let's melt him, said Jiraiya. Senpo, Gomen, Sage Art, Bath of Boiling Oil, exclaimed the three sages while Jiraiya began to expel a tsunami of oil, Fukasaku a large wind release technique and Shima a gigantic fire release technique. The combination of the three techniques turned the area into an inferno, with oil burning at temperatures of thousands of degrees. Aarrggggghh cried Orochimaru while he escaped from his hitting spot, 
burns covering his whole body while the bone armor he previously created to protect himself from the jutsu was falling to burn pieces. The defensive capabilities of Bone Pulse Bloodline Limit are impressive, he should have been toasted from such attack but he survived with second and third degree burns, as soon as he refills his chakra reserves he will be able to use again that disgusting technique to regenerate himself, commented Fukasaku. Jiraiya charged at the burned Orochimaru who began to defend himself with bone weapons. If you didn't try to flee from our battle you could have been able to dodge my last attack, no wonder why Sarutobi sensei didn't choose you as Hokage, said Jiraiya. What are you talking about? That monkey didn't choose me because he was too afraid of the power I was gaining with my experiments and chose that student of yours because he would be easy to manipulate, responded Orochimaru. Jiraiya delivered a punch that Orochimaru blocked with a bone shield that cracked. You don't understand Sensei's reasons, the real reason you were not chosen as Hokage was due to your cowardice, you are too afraid of death to become a Kage, exclaimed Jiraiya. What? A Hokage, not any Kage, is someone who is willingly to make the biggest personal sacrifices for his village, not somebody like Danzo or you who would sacrifice anyone for the village. Only those persons who are not afraid of death can be Kages, I'm not talking about drones like root soldiers but people who keep their feelings and yet are not afraid to sacrifice themselves for the village. That's the reason Minato was chosen as Yandame and not a coward like you, said Jiraiya. Coward? That's the best insult you can make, Jiraiya, teased Orochimaru. You are a coward at heart, Orochimaru, cowardice is what has been leading you since you lost your parents. The explanation behind your talent was your desire to escape death, the reason you became so powerful at a young age. The more powerful you became, the lesser the chance you would die in a mission. Your dream to learn all the jutsus in the world. Just a mere excuse in your pursuit of power to escape death, that's your true reason for your quest of immortality, the dream is just an excuse for it, said Jiraiya. Orochimaru was trembling with rage at Jiraiya's words. You. Reality hurts, doesn't it? The truth is that you never had real talent, your strength was the strength that comes from desesperation, something that anybody can display in life or death situations. The only thing that differentiated you from the rest of people was your immense fear. For that reason you wanted to steal the power of real geniuses as Itachi, because you were jealous of his talent and wanted it for you. It explains why you were able to get so many followers, as a supreme coward you were able to identify their fears and manipulate them for your advantage, stated Jiraiya. Before Orochimaru could respond, his body began to convulse. Much to Jiraiya and the sage's disgust, he wide opened his mouth and regurgitated a humanoid form completely made of bones. A bone clone? Wait, its chakra is different from Orochimaru, said Fukasaku. A face began to form in the creature's deformed head until it took the shape of the last member of the Kagaya clan, Kimamaro. H. He separated his mind from the body he shared with Orochimaru and transferred it that bone clone, said Shima. Is he crazy? Without a real body as soon as the clone is destroyed or is out of chakra he will die, he is not a Kage Bunshin, his mind won't go back to Orochimaru's body, pointed Fukasaku. Before anybody could do something, the clone charged at Jiraiya and grabbed the toads, managing to break the fusion technique. In normal circumstances it shouldn't have happened but the accumulated fatigue from the fight and the surprise of Kimamaro's sudden appearance weakened their hold in the technique enough to let the last Kagaya to separate them. Orochimaru-sama, I will deal with this vermin, please defeat that sinner who spreads lies about you and forgive me for not being able to help you when we were one, said Kimamaro while he dragged the struggling toads away. As soon as the connection between Jiraiya and the other sages was broken he felt the full effects of the chakra consumption from the battle now that he no longer had the shared chakra pool, nor the constant source of nature chakra. Such wasted loyalty, Kimimaro now has only some minutes of life left, even if he was not going to die from the separation he is not match for those two. But thanks to that the fight is again between Orochimaru and I alone and we are in our last reserves, I only will be able to keep sage mode for a minute or two, 
I have to end the battle in that time, he thought. Orochimaru didn't care, he was so furious from Jiraiya's words that he barely noticed Kimimaro's final sacrifice. H how you dare to mock me about being afraid of death. Me, who posses the power of reincarnation. I transcended mortality and I will show you. Behold. Yamata no Jutsu. Eight-headed serpent Jutsu. To Jiraiya's atonishment Orochimaru's body began to transform into a jauntic white serpent with eight heads and eight tails, the Godame only could watch unbelieving how the creature grew to a size comparable to a tailed beast. One of the snakes opened its mouth and from it emerged Orochimaru's torso. Ku, ku, ku. Are you afraid Jiraiya-kun? Do you realize the difference between our power? he asked. Jiraiya looked at the creature for several seconds unable to decide what to do until he came to a resolution. So that's it? I hoped that I could survive in this timeline but it looks like I will have to kick the bucket again, but this time I will do it as a Hokage, he thought. The gigantic snake tried to smash Jiraiya with its tails, destroying the street they were fighting in but when it retired them there was no body. Over here, idiot, said a voice from above. There was Jiraiya, falling towards Orochimaru's Yamada form. Oh, I see, he just made a big jump using the sage mode, fool, now in the air he is completely at my mercy, thought Orochimaru. The snake heads aligned themselves together and began to gather chakra to perform a combined chakra attack, similar to a bijadama. The falling Jiraiya was not intimidated and began to concentrate all his remaining chakra into a single attack. Meanwhile, at the top of a nearby building, Tsunade saw how her former teammates classed for the last time, with his current lover betting his life in a final attack, a Raisingan. But it was not a mere Raisingan or the Cho Odom a Raisingan that could be done in sage mode, an attack able to carve away an entire mountain. It was an even bigger attack, the Ultra Big Ball Raisingan, a Raisingan half the size of a bijou, a technique only performed previously by Naruto's future. Self when he fought against Kurama for the control of his chakra. No. I arrived too late. If I hadn't been so busy healing the wounded ninjas I could have helped Jiraiya against Orochimaru, she thought. She ran towards them but it was too late, the attacks clashed against each other creating shockwaves and small earthquakes, the few who could see the impact had to close their eyes from light caused by the clash of such powerful attacks. For a moment it looked like the attack from the Yamada was about to win but the Raisingan began to gain ground. Orochimaru panicked. No. I can't end like this. I have to escape, I won't be defeated by that clown. He tried to move away but it was everything what was needed for his own attack to yield against Jiraiya's ultra big ball Raisingan and received the full impact. Stupid fool. If you had the guts to keep fighting instead of trying to escape you wouldn't have lost. Goodbye Orochimaru, cried Jiraiya. I. Arrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
they will teach the sage arts to Minato and Naruto, it's a pity that I won't be able to see how far will go those brats, it's that Tsunade Haim. Yes, she is, me and my damned luck in love, all these decades to make her fall in love with me and when I finally did it I have to die again, but I don't regret it, this last year with her was worth of it. The image of Tsunade running towards him was the last thing before he was engulfed in darkness. The sages were the first to reach him. Jiraiya-chan, exclaimed Shima. He has no chakra left. We have to fuse with him and share our own, said Fukasaku while he put his hand on Jiraiya. It's useless, he is no longer breathing, we can't fuse with him, cried Shima. Step aside, I'll treat him, said Tsunade. Tsunade Haim, whispered Fukasaku. A quick check confirmed that Jiraiya's heart was no longer beating. H he needs CPR, she said while trying to keep her professionalism. At the same time she administered CPR, Tsunade began to pour healing chakra on Jiraiya while at the same time sharing her own to replenish Jiraiya's reserves. Fukasaku and Shima used their sensing abilities to check for a response from Jiraiya's chakra network. There was none, but they found something else. T Tsunade Haim you are. There is no time for that, I have to save him, interrupted Tsunade. She redoubled her effort to save her lover. Images of Dan's final moments appeared in her mind, reminding her of the immense impotence she felt when she couldn't save him. Damn it Jiraiya, don't dare to die. I lost Nawaki, I lost Dan, we lost Orochimaru and I once lost you. You don't know how happy I was when I got you back. I even decided to give you a chance and I don't regret it, don't ruin it dying again, she whispered while she kept treating him. Still there was no response. Then to the sage's surprise she slapped him. Slap, wake up you idiot. Are you going to leave me after I gave you my heart? I'm not one of those harlots you met in your travels, I'm Senja Tsunade, the woman you love, slap, are you going to give up life now that you achieved your dream? You got the student you love as a son back and you found the child of the prophecy and made him your apprentice. Don't you want to see how he brings peace again to the ninja world? I saw it in the future and I want you to see it with me this time, slap, repeat the miracle you did in the future and revive yourself again, I will keep you alive, because I prefer to let you turn the Sanjus into a clan of perverts than having to raise our child alone, she cried. Fukasaku looked at them dumbfounded while Shima elbowed it to keep helping Tsunade with the reanimation. She opened his eyes and showed him a piece of paper. Yes, you heard it right, you pervert, I'm pregnant. I found about it just before the invasion. Nawaki never met our father, I won't allow our child to share the same fate, for that reason you will live, she said. With those words she focused her healing chakra like she never did, putting all her soul and the experience she got after years of being the best medic Neen ever. The toads checked again. Jiraiya is. Tsunade felt a familiar touching her but, in normal circumstances she would have broken that hand for touching her without her permission but this time she smiled. Jiraiya opened his eyes. I is it true my Haim? Are we going to be parents, he whispered. She nodded while she whipped away the tears. Yes, it is true. I neither could believe that I was pregnant at my age, specially due to the aftereffects of my Sozo Saze, creation rebirth, but I made several tests and had them triple checked, it must be my Uzumaki blood, due to their vitality and longevity Uzumaki women don't experiment menopause, Kushina's mother had her when she was 61 inch, commented Tsunade. Never mind. Now I have another reason to do what I'm going to do. I wanted to do it after the invasion is over and it looks like we already won, said Jiraiya while he got up. Don't move Jiraiya-chan, you are still weak. Wait until you recover a bit more, berated Shima. She was about to force Jiraiya to be lying again but Fukasaku stopped her. Let him be, men, no matter the species, do reckless things for the women they love, he said. Jiraiya got on knee and took a small box from his pocket, relieved to see that it was intact. Senju Tsunade Haim, Slug San Nin, granddaughter of the Shodai Hokage, 
grandniece of the Naidame Hokage, student of the Sandame, original Godame of Kanoha, Kanoha's chef medic, greatest medical ninja ever, legendary sucker, most beautiful woman ever and woman of my dreams, will you marry the gallant Jiraiya, Toad Sanin, super pervert and second Godame Hokage of Kanoha and make him Jiraiya the happiest man alive, he asked while he revealed a very expensive looking ring that obviously cost. More than three months of Hokage's salary. Tsunade embraced and kissed him. Yes I will. I will be your wife. Now lay down again so I can keep healing you, she said. Jiraiya responded with the biggest smile he ever displayed. Okay, but first there is something I have to do as Hokage. Pa, Ma, can you lend me some chakra so I can perform a voice amplification jutsu strong enough to be heard in the whole village, he asked. Yes, but don't overtax yourself, said Jiraiya. Jiraiya began to talk. All those who are still fighting and those who are hiding. The fight is over, Kanoha won. Orochimaru is dead and I previously felt the defeat of the Tsuchikages, both of them. All those invaders who are still in shape to fight stop fighting and you will receive a fair treatment. Don't see this as a sign of weakness, you already know what we are capable of. You were tricked to invade us by a common enemy, there is no need to keep fighting, soon the village was filled with cheers of victory. Those few IWA ninjas who didn't flee yet or didn't cross paths with Minato were a bit reluctant to stop fighting but agreed to do it when they heard about Anoki agreeing for a truce with Kanoha. Things were a bit different with the sound ninja, the majority of those few who survived fled the village and the rest were taken as prisoners of war. The news of Kanoha's victory reached the shelters and while some villagers began to celebrate it the majority of them became anxious to find out what happened to their ninja friends or relatives, praying that they survived the invasion. Those with more foreshadowing wondered if that invasion attempt was the prelude of a new ninja war, what nobody doubted was that things wouldn't be the same any longer. There was also the revelation of the Yandame being alive and how they treated his son. The fact that they saw from one of the cameras that monitored the battles how that boy saved the village from being leveled made things worse. For first time they began to see him as the hero he was but they lamented that perhaps it was too late to fix their mistake. With Sasuke and Itachi the older Uchiha looked at the destroyed mountain and deactivated his Susanoo, freeing Sasuke. Naruto Kuen grew up a lot, he is no longer the brat who challenged you all time and lost, something similar happens with the rest of your peers, he said before looking at Sasuke. But you are the one who grew the most, cough, you already surpassed me when I had your age, you became really strong, I'm glad that Kanoha will be inherited by such a capable generation. Cough, he said. Sasuke looked at his brother with disbelief. Why are you acting like nothing happened? And why that blood? Are you ill, he cried. Sasuke Kuen, called a familiar voice. What? Sakura. You are fine, exclaimed Sasuke. The pinkette was running towards them followed by the rest of Jenin's, completely healed, the hole on her dress was the only evidence of the accidental wound that almost killed her. Much to Sasuke's relief there was not even a scar on Sakura flesh. She noticed his eyes on her new, cleavage and covered herself with a blush. D don't stare at me like that. It's embarrassing, she cried. Everyone laughed at Sakura's sudden shyness now that she finally got Sasuke's attention after all those years. The girls awed when he covered her with his Uchiha police jacket and gave her a peck in the lips. You will have to get used to that, you are my girl now, he said while she got a blush able to compite with Hinata's and the other boys whistled at them. However they stopped when Itachi approached the couple. Niji and Kiba were about to intervene when Shikamaru stopped them. What are you doing? He is going to attack them, cried Kiba. No, he won't. Itachi is not Kanoha's enemy, he never was. I'm fact he is the most loyal shinobi this village ever had, he said. Sasuke felt the impulse to get between Itachi and Sakura but he had the feeling that it was no necessary. You are Sakura Haruno, right? Take care of my Odoto, I won't be able to do it any longer, 
he whispered. Sakura responded with a weak nod, confused by Itachi's attitude until the medic within her realized his state. Oh my! Itachi is dying! He looked at his little brother with a smile and Sasuke couldn't see any longer the eyes that haunted him since the night of the massacre, he only saw his Nisan's kind eyes. He didn't move when Itachi poked him in the forehead. Then his brother collapsed to the ground. I Itachi. Itachi. Elsewhere Minato, Anoki, Tenzo and Rashi were flying towards the destroyed mountain. Rashi was flying thanks to Anoki's power while Tenzo was riding a smaller version of the wood dragon that had wings made of gigantic leaves. Curiously when Rashi asked Tenzo if it was a technique from Hashirama Tenzo stated proudly that it was a technique he created of his own. On their way there they saw Kushina and the rest of Naruto's team. Hinata, Hei 8 and Lee got into Tenzo's dragon while Minato took Kushina on his arms. Usually an encounter like that after an enemy attack would have been a happy moment for the couple but their concern for their son outweighed it. Min Kun, I have bad news, Sound Ninja knew about the properties of Naruto's blood and spread the word during the attack. The dirty-mouthed girl said that Orochimaru managed to get a severed arm from Naruto during the mission at Snow Country. His thrill that he lost an arm during that battle was right, we never could confirm it because we never found it but now we know that it was true, the limb was in Orochimaru's hands, said Kushina throughout their link. Minato mumbled a curse towards Orochimaru and wished that Jiraiya didn't kill him so he could do it himself but quickly regained his cool. We will deal with that matter later, now we have to focus in our son's safety, he said. Hinata couldn't keep the appearance of calm as good as Minato. Naruto-kun. We are coming, she whispered. Rashi looked at her. You must be that Hinata that Naruto loves to talk about during the shared dreams. Don't worry about him, he is alive. With the bijou so near of each other son Goku would have found out if something happened to Kurama. The fox is all right so the same must be for Naruto, he said. The team and the parents felt relieved. Kushina was about to berate Rashi for not telling about it earlier when they finally arrived to the mountain. They saw two figures among the rubble, they recognized one as Naruto, the other was wearing an Akatsuki cloak. However they were not fighting, in fact they seemed to be chatting in what seemed to be friendly terms. Don't tell me that Naruto managed to befriend Nagato even before defeating the Deva Path, commented Minato. You know our Naruchan he is the most surprising ninja in the... What the? That's not the Deva Path, exclaimed Kushina. They landed at Naruto's side, incapable to believe what they were seeing. Mom, Dad, Hinata-chan and everyone else. I'm glad that you came, I was having a talk with a new friend, let me introduce him, said Naruto unaware of everyone's astonishment. Let me introduce myself, Naruto, said the man in the Akatsuki. At first sight said man looked almost identical to the Deva path but he lacked all the body piercings, he had a friendly demeanor and instead of pain's cold Rinnegan eyes he had kind brown ones. Nice to meet ya. It's great to meet another. Fellow student of Jiraiya, my name is Yahiko, he said while he made an imitation of Jiraiya's smile. After a long and violent battle Jiraiya manages to defeat Orochimaru at the cost of his hand. He almost died but was saved in the last second by Tsunade who revealed that she was carrying their child. Meanwhile Minato and Kushina accompanied by Tenzo, Anoki, Rashi and Naruto's team go to the place where Naruto teleported the Deva path just to find him talking a very alive Yahiko. Everyone looked in disbelief at Yahiko. Although Minato was not near Karen's level at all, he was skilled enough in chakra sensing to recognize Yahiko's chakra from the time they met in afterlife. Kushina also recognized from Minato's memories and realized something. Min Kun, didn't you meet Yahiko and Nagato after Pain's invasion? she asked. Yes, they didn't appear until Nagato died and. Oh, I see. It explains everything, this man is actually Yahiko, they were about to talk to him when they noticed more people coming to the place. They decided to wait a bit more before starting with the questions. 
The first group to arrive was one lead by the Sandame Kazakage accompanied by Gara, Tamari and Kankuro. The second one was lead by Mei and her bodyguards. The third one was formed by the Rakage, Killer B and Yujito. The final group were Jiraiya, Tsunade, Fukasaku and Shima, accompanied by Zabuza and Hayashi. Why are all the Kages coming here at the same time? asked Kushina. Jiraiya probably sent them mental messages using a Yamanaka asking them to come here or they probably decided by themselves to check the crater that was a mountain just a few moments ago, guessed Minato. Yahiko abandoned his happy mood and looked at the different Kages with a very serious face. There were the leaders of the five great villages, the nations that turned aim into a battlefield and caused so much time for its people. His glare softened when his eyes fell on Jiraiya. Sensei. I'm very happy to see you. You became the Hokage? You said that you'd rather sleep with Orochimaru than taking such nightmarish job, he said. Yahiko, you are alive. How is it possible? You died years ago when Danzo and Hanzo plotted against you, cried Jiraiya while he approached his strange student. The Godame didn't care if everyone was watching, he embraced his student and Yahiko responded back. Minato couldn't help but feel a bit jealous, Yahiko was Jiraiya's first student and that gave him a special place in their mentor's heart. It neither helped that their first encounter after years was a violent battle where he threw all his bile at Jiraiya, yes, the Sanmin deserved it but it didn't make the memory less uncomfortable. The aim mean noticed Jiraiya's missing hand. Sensei. What happened to your hand? Are you fine? You should be in a hospital, he cried. Oh that? It's just a flesh wound that I got fighting Orochimaru, it's nothing. Compated to how he ended, the retrieval teams instead of putting his corpse in a body bag will have to use a bucket. The hand is something that can be fixed with a mere transplant or a puppet prothesis but I have the feeling that I won't need any of those to get the hand back, commented Jiraiya while he sent a look to Minato. He also found about the healing properties of the Namike's blood, thought Minato. As you said we will deal with it later, watch out for the rakage, I don't like the way he is looking at them, said Kushina. What's the meaning of this, roared a, Hokage, is this Akatsuki member really a student of yours? Yes I am, do you have any problem with that? UH, responded Yahiko while he tried to put a scary face. Minato was about to intervene before his senpai got into a fight against an opponent that would wipe the floor with him now that he wasn't the deva path any longer. Can someone explain me what's going on, exclaimed Anoki, this man is not the Akatsuki leader, that man had the Rinnegan, looked like a needle case and had a really sinister chakra, this one is a brat with a mouth bigger than his brain, Yahiko was about to reply to Anoki when someone intervened. Eh. Mini Gigi? What are you doing here? You should be at the hospital, commented Naruto. Those who were aware of the Tsuchikage's wrath had to do their best effort to not laugh at the nickname that Naruto gave to Anoki. Yahiko and B were rolling on the floor laughing. Jiraiya was tempted to join them. Show more respect, brat. I'm Anoki of both scales, the sandamed Tsuchikage, exclaimed the Kage. Naruto unsealed his bingo book, took a look at Anoki's page and then at the Kage until he recognized him. To Naruto's defense Anoki appeared in the bingo book wearing the Tsuchikage hat. What the? You are really the Tsuchikage. Sorry for not recognizing you, I didn't know that you were half bald and I thought that you were taller, commented Naruto. Now nobody could contain the laughter. I had to acknowledge that the yellow flash's son had a good pair of balls for speaking that way to the old shrimp. Anoki exploded and began to prepare a dust attack to wipe out the annoying Uzumaki. To hell with the truce and with the Akatsuki menace. I'm going to kill this brat. Screw the consequences, cried Anoki while Rashi did the best he could to contain him. He calmed down some minutes later after Naruto apologized to Anoki while his mother scolded him saying that he should be more sensitive about other people's physical issues. Anoki was a bit pissed at the way the Uzumaki woman remarked the physical issues part. 
let's get to the point, intervened the Kazakage. Yahiko-san, could you explain us who are you and what relationship you have with Akatsuki and the Godame Hokage? Yes, I'm also curious about that, I'm surprised that one of the Sanmin trained ninjas who are not from Kanoha, commented. May. I think the same, said A, are you a Kanoha spy at AIM or what? Yahiko ignored the rakage's comment and looked at the reunited people. You are right, it will be better if you know about my story, my relationship with Jiraiya Sensei, why I founded Akatsuki and how things got screwed, he said. The AIM Nin began his sad story, explaining how suddenly he ended without parents and without his home due to living in a country between enemy nations during the Second Shinobi War while he looked at the Kages with accusing eyes. Anoki and A were about to point that the weak suffering when the strong fought was an uncomfortable fact of life but decided to let it pass. Then he told them how he met Conan and Nagato, the bond they formed and how they survived as scavengers. At that time Lee was crying waterfall tears and wanted to embrace Yahiko for being so youthful in such circumstances but Hei 8 ordered him to stay quiet and allow Yahiko to continue. Yahiko then told how they met the Sanans and asked them for training with Jiraiya agreeing to do it after finding out about Nagato's Rinnegan. If I had been in Jiraiya's sandals I would have taken the Rinnegan boy back to my village instead of wasting two years with them, thought all the foreign Kages. Yahiko's face illuminated when he talked about the time Jiraiya lived with them. The sage smiled when he rekindled those memories but he also felt guilty for not staying there for his own godson. Everyone looked at him with surprised eyes when Yahiko told them how he made them dress as toads. Naruto wondered if his father also did that training and if he would have to dress as a toad too. Then he told about Jiraiya's departure and how they became full-fledged Dame Ninja, the beginning of the Third Shinobi War and how they met the mysterious masked man who claimed to be Madara Uchiha and his refusal to work with him. Then we began to gather supporters who shared our ideals and created Akatsuki. Our purpose was to end war for our home country and aiding Nagato to bring world peace. At the beginning things were smoothly, at least until Danzo convinced Hanzo of the Salamander that we were a threat to his rule. They conspired against us, captured Conan and put us in a situation where they would kill her or me. I, I couldn't allow my Conan Chan to be hurt so I drove myself into the kunai that Nagato was holding and then I died, he said. Everyone was looking at him with expecting eyes. I, I can't know what happened next. Instead of meeting my parents in the afterlife everything was like a succession of sequences in a bad dream. I completely lost the sense of time, couldn't guess if it happened in a few minutes or if it lasted years. I saw Nagato crippled and turning my body and the ones of our fallen comrades into paths, Conan losing their smile, they agreeing to work with Madara and turning Akatsuki into a group of missing Nin. Then I woke up alive with. This Naruto boy saying that he is my Kohai, said Yahiko. I think I can explain that because I experimented a similar situation, said the Kazakage. It is something related to your resurrection, Kazakage, asked A. The Suna leader nodded and addressed the Aim Nin. Yahiko-san, what happened to you is that your spirit ended attached to your body when Nagato transformed it into one of Pain's paths, it's something similar to what happened to me when Sasori backstabbed me ending with my life and turned me into a human puppet until my successor freed me at the cost of his life, he said, keeping with the official version of his return. So that was the reason. Wait. You say that you were also dead? I didn't imagine that I would meet someone kicked the bucket but then got better. Are there more people like us, joked Yahiko. Everyone looked at Minato. Yahiko's jab dropped. Mmm, yeah, I also got another chance at life. Unlike the Kazakage and you I traveled to the afterlife. Let me introduce myself, I'm Minato Uzumaki Namikaze, the Yandame Hokage. The Shinigami allowed me to return in order to stop Madara and his moon I plan arguing that it is a menace for all life and without life there can't be death, explained Minato. It was basically the truth, the Shinigami wanted Madara dead and gave that task to Minato, other Kages didn't have to know all the details. Ah. Naruto mentioned you, 
you are his dad and another Kohai of mine. Now that I think about it, shouldn't you be the Godame Hokage and Sensei be the Yandame? asked Yahiko. Enough chit chat. This is not a meeting of academy graduates, exclaimed A. He looked at Naruto. You, the so-called Prince of Konoha, you are the one who did this, explain, he demanded. Kushina and Minato were about to scold a for talking to their son like he was one of his subordinates but the Mizukage intervened. Before Naruto-kun explains how he brought Yahiko-san back I think that everyone, especially those that in the future who will be reading a recording of these events, want to know how he survived the attack that destroyed this place, isn't it right naruto Kun? asked Mei with a smile that would melt most men. Said smile barely had any effect on Naruto, enamored of Hinata as he was, but it didn't prevent the girl to send the older woman a Hyuga glare that made her father proud. Little she knew that soon she would have to be used to use it on regular basis. Naruto began to explain. Well, it started when I saw the Deva path floating over Kanoha, doing that, a god am I talk and accumulating chakra, I realized that the incoming attack was powerful enough to screw the village. I sent a clone who grabbed him and teleported them to the mountain where I had one of my own Horatian seals. The last thing that the clone did before being destroyed was to place a tag with the seal in the Deva Path's cloak, I figured out that the repel power didn't work with the clothes because either way he would go bare ass. Then I teleported where he was just after he destroyed the mountain, he said. The Kages made a nod of acknowledgement for Naruto's clever tactic. It's good to see that you are making a good use of the resources you have at your disposal, especially that brain of yours. You may not have the planification of the Nara but you are definitely a quick thinker when needed, commented Jiraiya. Stop swonking about your student, what happened next, Kade, when I teleported to the Deva path side it immediately destroyed the tag and attacked me with Taijutsu. I didn't know why he didn't use his power but then I remembered that our intel said that he needed to wait some seconds before being able to use it again but this time he was powerless for several minutes due to the mountain crusher attack. I took advantage of that and tried to place chakra disruption seals to capture the path and then try to find a way to track the one controlling Yahiko's body, then I remembered that dad told me that Yahiko didn't go to the afterlife and I realized that his soul was attached to his body as happened with the Kazakage so I took one of dad's liberation seals and tried to use it on Yahiko's body. It took me a lot of work to place the seal, although he couldn't use its power the Deva path fought like a complete bastard and had those hidden chakra bars ready to stab. At the end I managed to fool him with a clone hidden behind him and placed the seal. It was awesome. A light engulfed the body, the rods were expelled, the Rinnegan disappeared and the Deva became again Yahiko Senpai, exclaimed Naruto. The Kages who didn't know about the seal looked at Minato. The Liberation Seal, what is that? asked Anoki. It's a seal I developed in the afterlife with the help of members of the Uzumaki clan and the Shinigami's blessing. It was developed to with the purpose of keeping the free will in case someone was summoned back with the Edo Tensei. However I never imagined that it would have the side effect of giving back life to the controlled person. When the Yandame Kazakage brought back his predecessor he used a technique that worked in a similar way to the seal. If I had known about it perhaps the Yandame Kazakage wouldn't have had to sacrifice his life to free the Sandame, explained Minato, scratching again the truth. The Kazakage confirmed his explanation in order to keep the official story of the previous Kazakage heroically sacrificing his life instead of being an Akatsuki agent. The other Kages looked nervous. Are you telling me that you can bring back to life whoever you wanted if you combined the Edo Tensei and that seal? asked A, horrified at the thought of Minato bringing back the Shodai and Naidame Hokages, the White Fang and other powerful ninjas from Kanoha's story. Yes and no. The only ones alive able to do the jutsu are Madara and probably a missing. Nin named Kabuto Yakushi. If you are planning to research it don't do it. Said technique requires a human sacrifice to work and the user is sent straight to hell when he dies, explained Minato. The Kages were relieved, Kanoha ninjas were not the type who sacrificed people like that so they wouldn't have to worry about legendary ninja coming back to life. 
Jiraiya surprised everyone bowing at Naruto. Arigato my student. You brought back one of your lost senpais, I'm very proud of being your sensei, said the Kage and making Naruto blush from the praise. Talking about senseis where is your own, interrupted Anoki, at the end all this started due to the intervention of Danzo, that devious crippled, Sarutobi should have listened to me at the end of the second war and execute the bastard when he could, you won't have to worry about Danzo anymore. What he did was an unsanctioned mission at the Sandames back with the only purpose to increase his influence, due to that act of high treason and other things we recently discovered it was decided that he would be captured and executed as the traitor he is. Sarutobi sensei offered himself to carry out the mission, said Jiraiya. Him? While the old monkey may have no problem killing those he doesn't know he is a completely softy when dealing with those who he has attachments, it was his recalcitrance to kill Orochimaru what caused this invasion. If he didn't kill his prized student why do you think that he won't do the same with his old colleague, pointed Anoki. I asked him the same question and he bowed by his life that if he didn't come back with Danzo, dead or alive, Minato and I would have to execute him, responded Jiraiya in a very serious tone. Naruto looked in disbelief at his father and Jiraiya and realized that they were completely serious about that. I hope that the old man is successful, he thought. Yahiko looked at everyone. Now that everything is explained I will go to talk with Nagato, I have some memories of where he is hidden, I have to tell him how wrong is he path he chose to achieve our dream and. Suddenly the space before those present combed in a spiral pattern and two figures appeared. It's Madara. No, it isn't him, thought Minato. One of the figures was Muta, the current Tsuchikage. He looked completely beaten and couldn't stand but still looked at everyone with a defiant Sharingan eye. The other figure was a ninja with a Kanoha forehead protector. He also looked bruised but still was in better shape than his adversary, however what caught everyone's attention was the Manjenkyu Sharingan on his left eye and the seal patterns that surrounded it. The seal patterns disappeared and everyone could get a better view of his face. May. Tamari and Yujido blushed and Hinata and Kushina probably would have done the same if they didn't think that Naruto and Minato were the most attractive men in the world. Who's that? And? Why he has a Sharingan, thought the majority of the people present. Sorry if I'm late, that Tsuchikage didn't want to collaborate and it took me a lot of effort and time to drag him here, said the man. Kakashi-sensei? Is this how you look without the mask? asked Naruto in disbelief. What? My mask? Ohshit, exclaimed Kakashi when he realized that he was bare-faced. He put his spare mask, to the women's disappointment. Muta looked at Anoki. So at the end you decided to talk with our enemies, Anoki? You are disappointing, he said. You are the only disappointment here, retorted Anoki. I already told you that we were not ready to invade yet even with Orochimaru's help, but no, you wanted to play the Avenger. The only reason our comrades are alive is because Kanoha needs us against a common enemy, I suppose that he is the same person who gave you that Sharingan, don't dare to admonish me, especially after you lost against a Jonin, there are not mere Jonins, thought A, Jonins are elite ninjas for a reason, especially if we take account that this one is Hitaki Kakashi the infamous copy ninja. I bet that Minato trained him to reach a level similar to Akage, those seals we previously saw are probably there to enhance his Sharingan, waste less chakra when using it or probably both things Muta didn't look affected by Anoki's words. TCHK, and I thought that Kanoha and IWA would destroy themselves, he said. What? There is no point to keep with the facade anymore said Muta while he transformed into a white Zetsu. The creature was immediately immobilized by the combined techniques of those present like Kushina's chains or the Jinchuriki's chakra arms. Who are you? Where is Muta? demanded Anoki. That fool died months ago. I absorbed his DNA and then used this Sharingan that Madara-sama gave me to persuade the many of Iwa's Jonans that I was the best option for next Suchikage. You saw this as a chance to be free of the paperwork and gave me the seat. You already know the rest, said the Zetsu. 
He is a white Zetsu, an artificial being created by Madara the DNA he stole from the Shodai Hokage and other means, this one must be an enhanced version, said Minato. As clever as expected Minato, said the Zetsu, I doesn't matter that this plan failed. Soon, very soon all the ninja villages will fall under the might of our army and we will accomplish Madara-sama's dream of world peace under his rule, the Zetsu began to melt, a self-destruction measure. He looked at Yahiko. By the way, you're friends, and you are no longer part of the Akatsuki, with you back they are no longer useful to the organization. It's a pity, if you stayed dead perhaps we could have keep using them, said before turning into Goo. What? Nagato? Conan? I have to go to help them, cried Yahiko while he left the place. Everyone followed him. Nagato's hideout, some minutes before Nagato couldn't. Believe what was happening. The QB brat brought Yahiko back to life. At first the link was interrupted when most the chakra rods were removed by the resurrection process but a small one remained within Yahiko's body and thanks to it Nagato was aware of what was happening at the destroyed mountain and realized that his best friend was actually back. Yahiko's talk with the Kages was like a jug of cold water. He realized that he completely deviated from Yahiko's vision of world peace, that Conan and him were being used by Madara to achieve his own plan. Forgive me Yahiko. I let my pain for losing you to take away my good judgment. I became a mockery of a god, blamed a whole village for what a few of them did, allowed Madara to turn the organization you founded into a band of missing means and inadvertently attached your spirit to your body and forced you to watch, but the worst of all is that I dragged the woman you loved into my fall. Yes, I knew about your feelings for each other, you didn't told me because you felt that I would feel displaced. I planned to tell you that I knew and that I was happy for you but then Danzo kidnapped Conan. He took a decision. I will communicate with Conan and tell her about Yahiko. Then I will turn to the Kages with the condition to leave Conan, Yahiko and aim alone. It's the least I can do, the thought. Suddenly he felt a world of pain and found a kunai piercing his heart. The last thing he saw was Madara materializing before him. Hello Nagato, I no longer need you, I only came back for my eyes. Don't put that face, you won't be alone, I already disposed of Conan before coming here, say her hi from me, said Madara. Underground root facility unaware of what happened outside, Hiruzen Saratobi, covered by the blood of root ninjas got into Danzo's chamber, ready to have a final battle with his former friend. Instead of that he found Danzo's mutilated corpse, missing the arm with the Mokutan cells and multiple Sharingans. The empty eye socket confirmed that whoever killed Danzo and took the arm also took Shursui's stolen Sharingan. He also noticed another body in the room, a woman with an Akatsuki cloak and blue hair adorned by a paper flower. She was lying face down with a sword piercing her back. She didn't move. Hiruzen looked at her with sad eyes, recognizing her as Conan, one of Jiraiya's lost students. I see, Madara came for Danzo while I was fighting the root shinobi and then he backstabbed her. Damned monster. Jiraiya was really eager for the chance to save Nagato and her but now that she died in Konoha it will be impossible to get Nagato back, there is not doubt that Madara will blame us for her death, he thought. He headed to Danzo's corpse. Are you satisfied with the results of your schemes, Danzo? Did they make Kanoha safer or did they turn potential allies into mortal enemies? I really wish that we had the chance to take you to trial and judge you. The sentence would have been death, obviously, it would be just a charade but at least it would have given some symbolic justice for your victims, he said. He proceeded to seal the body, then he headed to Conan. I will make sure that you will have a good burial and then hunt down the one who did that to you, I also have personal issues with him, he said while he prepared the ceiling. However he noticed something. What the? This girl is alive. Naruto and Yahiko explained to those present how Naruto survived the attack that destroyed the mountain and why Yahiko was back among the living. 
Meanwhile Madara murders Nagato and tries to do the same with Conan but she is found by the Sandame after finding out about Danzo's demise. Despite the tremendous power of the whole group of ninjas from different nations they couldn't get in time to Nagato's hiding point to save him, when they arrived Tsunade only could confirm that Nagato was dead, anybody could have done it at the vision of Nagato's mutilated corpse missing the Rinnegan eyes and the heart. Tsunade looked at Yahiko. I'm sorry but there is nothing that I can do to save him, whoever did this removed his heart to prevent a miraculous reanimation from my part. If it's any consolation I can say that Nagato got a quick and not very painful death, she said. To everyone's surprise Yahiko didn't look too surprised when he found out about the fate of the man he considered a brother, his sadness was another thing. I I see. On our way here I felt a pain in my heart that suggested me what happened to him. I I didn't want to believe it but it happened anyways, he said while he clutched his chest. He looked at Nagato's mutilated and languished body. I'm sorry my friend, I can't imagine how much you suffered in that state all these years. Now that I see you I'm not surprised that you came to that senseless plan to carry out our dream of peace, the pain didn't let you think with clarity. At least you are now in a better place, with your parents and your dog Chibi, he said while he touched Nagato's forehead with his. He felt a small pain in the back of his eyes but ignored it, he realized that he completely forgot about Conan. Conan. That guy said that they were after her too. I have to help her, he cried in panic. Yahiko, wait. I just got a message from the Sandame. It says that he found her critically wounded but alive in Root's hideout. He managed to save her life and he is taking her to Kanoha's hospital, said Jiraiya while he read the words that were appearing on his bracelet. She is wounded? Where is the hospital? I have to see her, cried Yahiko. Jiraiya looked at Tenzo and Zabuza. You two, escort Yahiko to the hospital. If someone puts impediments for taking a ninja who looks like pain to the hospital just put your scary faces and tell them that I sent him, and Yahiko, remove that Akatsuki cloak, you will cause. Panic in Kanoha if you appear wearing it, he ordered. I will seal Nagato's body into a scroll, offered Kushina. Yahiko thanked her, removed the cloak and left the hideout accompanied by the Kanoha ninjas. The rest of the group headed back to Kanoha in a slower pace. On their way back, the other Kages asked Jiraiya about the communication bracelets and if Kanoha would share them with the rest of villages in an alliance against Akatsuki. The Godame just responded that he would have to talk with the clan that created the bracelets and pointed that their respective villages would have to make similar contributions for the alliance. At the end we will have to share some of the bracelets to improve the efficiency of the shinobi army but it doesn't mean that we have to be the only village sharing secrets. At least it looks like they are mentalizing themselves to form another shinobi alliance, he thought. Minato grabbed Kushina by the waist, who was clutching the scroll containing Nagato's remains, dissimulating how sad she was. I'm sorry Kushi-chan, I wish we could have saved him, he said. I know Min-kun. I shouldn't feel like that for Nagato's death, in the future I completely hated him for all the things he did to Naruto like killing Jiraiya, Shizun and Kakashi or when he destroyed Kanoha when the village was finally accepting our son and then what happened with Hinata. She sent a look to the young woman, who was talking with Naruto. Never mind, I'm happy that they didn't have to live that experience again, if it means that Nagato had to die again then be it, he decided to be our enemy betrayed his sensei, allied himself with Madara and tried to destroy our village and kill our son. He already avenged his parents when he killed the Kanoha ninjas who accidentally killed them in self-defense and could have gone only after Danzo when Yahiko died, he had no right to extend his revenge to the whole village for what a traitor did, she said. However you still wish that he survived, said Minato. How shouldn't I? Despite all his faults and sins Nagato was still a lost Uzumaki. Had his parents moved to Kanoha instead of AIM we would have met each other and become family, he would have become my cousin and with him around it is very likely that things would have turned different during the war and Naruto's birth. Thinking about how things could have been only causes distress, it's better to think ways to improve the future that didn't happen yet. 
I'm sure that Madara killed Nagato because he realized that Nagato was about to defect to our side. When time comes we will meet him again in the afterlife, he and our other lost relatives, remarked Minato. Kushina smiled and gave him a peck in the cheek. You always know how to make me feel better, Min Kun. It's relieving to know that the afterlife actually exists instead of believing about its existence, she said. Yes it is, but now. That I'm officially a man who came back from the afterlife I will have to deal with scholars, historians, priests, monks and curious people wanting to know about it, he said. You should write a treaty about that, if people realize that in fact they will go to hell if they are evil many of them wouldn't do bad things and it would be great news to find out that eventually they will meet again the precious people they lost, suggested Kushina. Yes, I was planning to do something similar when I resurrected in the future. I should ask Jiraiya some tips about writing when we end with Madara and Akatsuki, if he wins there will be no travel to the afterlife to write about, said Minato. The couple didn't notice how the Mizukage looked at them with jealous eyes. That lucky Uzumaki, getting a man like the yellow flash all for herself. He is even hotter than he was when he became famous and to make things more enervating they seem to have such understanding of each other that they can guess what the other thinks. Oh well, there are more fishes in the sea, for example his student Kakashi is also a very tempting catch, now I know why he wears that mask, women wouldn't leave him alone if he went around exposing such face, she thought. Meanwhile, at Kanoha's hospital, Shizun felt the need to scratch the Mizukage's face with the surgical instruments she was working with. Ignorant of all this Naruto was chatting with Hinata. I'm very happy that you didn't get hurt Naruto-kun, my heart almost stopped when the mountain was destroyed, she said. I'm really sorry for worrying you Hinata-chan, when I saw Pain preparing the attack I acted on the fly. At that time the real me was separated from you and couldn't go to you to tell that it was a clone, I had to take advantage of the time the Deva path needed to recharge his power, I didn't have the time to explain my plan, explained Naruto. I know Naruto-kun, I'm not angry at you, thanks to your quick thinking you saved us all, I can't be more proud of you, said Hinata while she gave Naruto a peck in the cheek. Like father, like son, thought Hayashi a bit annoyed at the sight of his daughter kissing, not mattering that they were engaged or that Naruto got his approval. He interrupted his thoughts at the sight of a member of clan coming towards them. Hayashi-sama, Hanada-sama. Finally I found you. It's Lady Hanabi, she is missing, exclaimed Ko. Hinata felt a pit on his stomach and Hayashi sent a glare to the rakage, who glared back at the Hyuga. Ko, explain what happened, said Hayashi without taking his from A. The servant told them how Hanabi and the Kanoamaru Corps were caught disguised, badly, as adults at the stadium at the beginning of the invasion and how they flew from the zone before one of the ninjas could take them to the shelters. Are you talking about those brats? They are safe, the Aburame boy, that Taki girl Fu and me fought some route. Idiots who wanted to take them away, explained Kankuro. Hinata sighed in relief and Hayashi stopped glaring at A, who decided to ignore the not-so-subtle accusation. When they finally arrived to the outskirts of Kanoha the group was greeted with an unexpected view. There stood the majority of Kanoha's habitants, both ninjas and regular civilians. They looked at Minato at awe, who looked back at them with indifference. Those few villagers who previously couldn't believe that Minato was actually alive finally realized that their previous leader and hero was back. It's really him. The Yan Dame. H. He was dead, I was in his funeral. So the black was actually the yellow flash, Kaya. Ah. He's even more handsome than before. That last comment came from a group of women who were looking at Minato with hearts on their eyes, Kushina was about to scold them when people realized Naruto's press sense. It's Naruto. He is alive. Thanks the heavens, our hero survived. Naruto-sama. Hooray for Naruto Uzumaki, the heroic prince of Kanoha and future Hokage. Yeah. A large group of ninjas from the younger generations lead by the majority of the Kanoha 15 approached the baffled Naruto. Dude, you scared us, 
you got to extremes to be the center of attention but I have to admit that being the big damn hero is a good one, joked Kiba. It's nice to see that you are fine, but next time warn us before doing such troublesome things, said Shikamaru. Now that we know that everyone is alright we should go to celebrate to that new restaurant, commented Chuji. The rest of the ninjas and the civilians also congratulated and praised Naruto. Then the multitude began to toss him to the air and celebrate the victory. Kushina smiled while she whipped some tears from her eyes, she remembered an almost identical scene in the future when Naruto returned from his fight with pain and all the village received him as a hero, it was one of the best memories she had from that time, when he finally got the acknowledgement he always wanted and deserved. However this time it happened earlier and this time there is no Sakura congratulating Naruto with a punch while the girl who always believed in him has to watch in the background, she thought. Said girl was smiling at her boyfriend's antics when she saw her stepmother Kyoko holding Hanabi's hand. At first Hinata was furious with her sister for doing something so dangerous when she was specifically told to not leave their home that day, but Hanabi's sad face told her that her Imato already learned her lesson, she needed consolation and comfort, not a punishment. The way Hanabi's face illuminated when she saw her confirmed her thoughts. Hanabi sent an appealing look to Kyoko, who nodded and let her go to reunite with Hinata. The little girl jumped on Hinata's arms. Nei chan Nei chan You are fine, cried Hanabi. I had my Comrades with me, I never was in danger. I'm very happy to see that you are fine to Hanabi-chan. Why did you do it? You were supposed to stay in the compound all day, you shouldn't have gone to the stadium, said Hinata. I wanted to see you fight, Nei-chan. You were amazing. I couldn't believe that you were so strong. You even showed that cool technique with your arms. They told me that you are the only one who can do it because you are the one who created it, will you teach me to do it? Or better, can you teach me to create my own technique? Nah? Nah? asked Hanabi. Hinata smiled and tapped her sister head. Yes, I will teach you, but when you get older. I hope that you learned your lesson, she said. Yes, don't get caught next time I went out to get adventures, said Hanabi. Hinata looked at her like she grew a third eye. What? You didn't get scared from the dangers you faced during your escapade, asked Hinata. What are you talking about? At first it was a bit scary but then things got very funny, we met Fu Nei-chan who is really cool, we fought some bad guys who wanted to take us away, then appeared Shino-san and the San Ninja with the cat ears and the funny face to help us and revealed that they were superheroes and then with Fu Nei-chan they kicked the bad guys' asses, said Hanabi. Hinata felt relieved to find out that her sister didn't get traumatized from the experience and took note that the Hyuga clan had thanked Shino, Kenkuro, and Fu for protecting Hanabi. Hanabi-chan, there's something I don't get. Why you were so downcast when we met, she asked. I it is because mom got angry at me. When she saw me she hugged me while crying a lot and then gave me a spank. Nei chan, does mom hate me now? asked Hanabi. Hinata smiled. Don't be silly, she got angry because she loves you a lot and got very worried when she found out about you disappearance. The spank was to discipline you, it is her duty as your mother. You should do something for apologize to her like giving her a present or helping her with her duties, said Hinata, amused that Hanabi was disciplined for her mischief. Oh yes, talking about gifts, here is the ring that Naruto Nissen gave you, the one you asked me to keep for you, said Hanabi while she handed her sister the ring with the half of the Shodai's stone. Thank you Hanabi-chan, I completely forgot about it, you made a great job, said Hinata while she hugged the girl. Meanwhile, Jiraiya and Minato were settling things with the other Kages to have a meeting in neutral territory concerning the future alliance. After it was settled each Kage left with their escorts to meet their delegations in their respective lodgings. After saying farewell Minato turned and saw an image that left him speechless. There stood all the older villagers and ninjas on their nests and their foreheads touching the ground in a clear apologizing gesture. Many from the younger. 
Generations also wanted to kneel but their elders told them that they shouldn't apologize for the mistakes of the older generations. Naruto's friends stopped with the air tossing and put him on the ground. One of the villagers came forward, still on his knees and spoke. W we are very sorry, Yandame-sama, Naruto-sama. We had no right to ignore Yandame-sama's last wish and not giving Naruto-sama the treatment he deserved for protecting the village with his mere existence all these years, we were too afraid to see the truth, we let our fear and our lack of faith in the Yandame skills to cloud our judgment and Naruto-sama had to suffer for that. It was not until we found out that Naruto-sama was Yandame-sama's son when we realized the commitment of his sacrifice, however not knowing the truth it doesn't excuse us at all, we should have followed Yandame-sama's last will even if Naruto-sama was not his son. We don't deserve a ruler as Hokage-sama who made such sacrifice for us and we neither deserve a ninja like Naruto-sama who risked his life for us. Forgive us, said the villager between sobs. You are worried about that? I already forgave you a long time ago, said Naruto, we are going to make an alliance with the other villages against the bastard who forced Kurama to attack the village, I would be a hypocrite if I fight alongside them while resenting you for just some glares, nasty comments and ignoring me. It's not like you formed mobs to lynch me, destroyed my apartment on regular basis, overcharged me at stores for bad quality stuff while the teachers at the academy sabotaged me. The villagers and the ninjas looked at him horrified. What? No, none of that shit happened. Why I would want to catch as everyone's attention if I had received such treatment. I probably would have wanted to destroy the village, not wanting to become Hokage to protect it, said Naruto. Everyone sighed on relief at the revelation that the village was not such an evil hole. Minato decided to speak. All right, if Naruto decided to forgive you I will do the same. I just warn you that any kind similar treatment to someone who doesn't deserve it won't be tolerated, we Kanoha citizens are supposed to be better than that, he said. Thank you very much Yandame-sama. We won't break your trust again. Thank you. Hail Yandame-sama. Hail Godame-sama. Hail Naruto-sama. Yandame-sama and Naruto-sama are very kind and powerful. And handsome, squealed a bunch of girls of several ages. They are already taken, remarked someone. We don't care. We do, exclaimed Kushina and Hinata at the same time silencing the girls. Shikaku approached the group. Sandame-sama called for a meeting for the clan heads and jonin representatives, we have to settle an important matter he said. Is the village endangered? asked Jiraiya. No, but it is something that must be solved as soon as possible, we have to design a substitute Hokage until Jiraiya-sama recovers from his injury, if he recovers, said the Nara. The adults nodded and told the Genins to not be at home too late after the celebration. First we will have to stop at home, there is something we will need, I have no doubt that we will end talking about an issue concerning my family," commented Minato. Council room, later Tsunade finished placing the custom-made cast on Jiraiya's arm and opened a cap at the hand's place and then poured a red liquid from a jar, almost a liter of Minato's blood, then she put the cap back. The sand dame, the fire lord and his entourage, the clan heads, the counselor and the ninjas looked at the process with a mixture of fascination and disbelief. So the rumor about Naruto's blood being able to heal other people like they had you bloodline limit is true. When I heard about it from the enemy I thought that it was a fortunate side effect from the Kyubi, I didn't imagine that it was another feature of your bloodline limit, commented Shikaku. At the time the enemy found out the secret of Naruto's blood I realized that there was no reason to keep hiding that it is a family trait. I won't allow to have my son being the only targeted for the healing properties of our blood, said Minato. How do you feel Jiraiya? asked Tsunade. It itches a little, I suppose that I can't scratch it, can't I? he joked. No, you can't, it's a small price considering that you will get a lost limb back, pointed Minato. How much time it will pass until Jiraiya gets his hand back? asked the Sandame. The process will take several weeks, a full regeneration is not the same as repairing a damaged body part. 
I think we should wait a month and a half while making periodical checks, said Minato. Understood, said the Sandame relieved to know that his student won't have to live the rest of life without a hand. Minato, there is a request I want to make to Naruto and you. Could you give the hospital some blood donations? The regenerative properties of your blood makes it an universal panacea, the dream of any medic. Blood donations in Kanoha are done in Kanoha for free but due to your blood being used in a different way than regular I will make it count as a trade of medicines and give you a good payment for it, said Tsunade. Then to Tsunade's surprise Kushina handed her a scroll. This scroll contains a thermal bag with bottles full of Minato and Naruto's blood, she explained. How? asked Tsunade. When I told Naruto the secret of our blood he got the idea of storing it with seals to use it later in the form of our healing salve, said Minato. So you have been sharing the power of your blood all that time in the form of a medicine, that's very remarkable, commented Chuza. Not so remarkable, it was as pricey as caviar. I wouldn't have acquired it to heal my injured leg if a friend didn't. Recommended it, commented an old Jonan. People laughed at the comment while Tsunade took note about adjusting the hospital budget for future acquisitions of the new medicine, knowing that it will heavily compensate the cost. There is also another matter we have to deal with. Until Jiraiya recovers Kanoha will need a substitute Hokage. Fortunately he prepared a list with best candidates in order of preference to where the Hokage had in case he was not available, said the Sandame while he unrolled a scroll. The list contained several names. The fifth position was for Gai, the fourth was for Kakashi, the third position was occupied by Kushina. A curious case was the second position, that had the Sandame's name crossed out and then had said name written again with the Sandame's handwriting at the end of the scroll, manifesting the old man's intention of not taking the seat for a third time. The first position was shared by Minato and Tsunade, pointing that any of them was the best option for Hokage. It looks like at the end we will have to decide between Minato and Tsunade, very good choices, I approve them, commented the Fire Lord. There is no need to make a decision, I reject the Hokage position, it's a very stressful job that I can't take in my state. As a medic I can say that pregnancies at my age are very risky, especially if we take account the tax that my regeneration technique took on my body. For that reason I have to take an early maternity leave, as the last senju I can't allow this last chance to continue the Shodai's lineage to be lost. I hope that you will understand my decision, besides, Minato has more experience than me as Hokage, at least in this timeline, said Tsunade looking very solemn. Everyone agreed with her and took the opportunity to congratulate Jiraiya and her for their future wedding and child. Minato had to admit that he couldn't compete with Tsunade's pregnancy excuse although the part about him being more experienced in the job irked him. Jiraiya took the word. Okay, it is decided that Minato is the best candidate for the position of substitute Hokage. Does anyone oppose? he asked. Nobody said anything. All right, I Jiraiya of the San Nin, Godame Hokage of Kanoha, name Minato Uzumaki Namikaze, Yandame Hokage of Kanoha as my substitute until I recover from my injury, excuse me but there is a mistake in that declaration, said a voice. Everyone looked at the one who said that, Shibi Aburame. What mistake are you talking about Aburame san asked Jiraiya. It's the Yandame's name, his current name is Minato Namikaze, not Minato Uzumaki Namikaze, he can't use the Uzumaki family name, said Shibi. What are you talking about? Minato became part of the Uzumaki clan when we married, he has all the rights to use that name, said Kushina. Shibi repositioned his glasses. That's the point, Uzumaki-san, technically your marriage ended when one of you died, he is no longer your husband so he can't use the Uzumaki name, he said. Minato and Kushina looked at each other dumbfounded at the realization that they were no longer married. The same happened to the rest of ninjas and clan heads present minus Shikaku and his friends, who already figured it out weeks ago. A pair of voices broke the silent, they were Koharu and Hamura. Ehem, if you excuse me, there is another matter we want to address, he said. 
wasn't he retired by Jiraiya? What is he doing here? asked Chuza. They returned to active duty when they found out about the invasion, they passed the evaluation tests to determine if they were fit to return and Jiraiya had no choice but to reincorporate them to Kanoha's ranks. It's ironic but due to their seniority and prestige among the Jonans they now have more influence than when they were the Sandame's advisors, explained Inoichi. Koharu spoke. Due to Abiram San's revelations, we came to the conclusion that Yandame Sama is now the last male member of the Namikaze family, she said. The smartest ninjas realized what she was talking about. Minato paled. The Sandame and Tsunade slapped their foreheads. Shikaku muttered something about troublesome laws. Shibi realized that it would have been better if he didn't talk. The Fire Lord didn't understand what was going on. Jiraiya found it really funny and began to giggle, same happened to Kakashi. Kushina was still too shocked with the previous realization to realize what was happening. The same happens with Naruto Uzumaki, who is now the last male member of the Uzumaki clan. If we consider that both them have an unique and powerful bloodline limit that now has been revealed even more useful and valuable for the village, we highly suggest to put both Minato Namikaze and Naruto Uzumaki under the CRA, Clan Restoration Act, she said. Kushina finally got out from her stupor. That's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and follow me on my other social media accounts. Anime God here, and I'm signing off.